was a strange day. Um, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks back how I've, I have, the, the most phenomenal thing has happened in my life. I, I didn't see this coming. I didn't tr practice for it. It just happened. And I'll show you. There it is. In my book, Going Alone, there's the chapter called The Good Life, where I lay out the Good Life Creed, which consists of eight objectives and 35 principles. These are the objectives that I strive for in life and the principles I use to get there. Principle number nine, right here, is called the pirate ride. And it is, and then there's details here explaining it all. The pirate ride is my shorthand for my belief that free will doesn't exist. And I've often in the past described that as something that I hold on faith. I can't prove it. That's still the case. I, I don't know how to empirically demonstrate that if I could go back five minutes from now and do something different than I did before. Um, like, you know, it's been 10 minutes I've been to this video, 10 minutes back and choose instead of to start to push the button to start the video, but then choose to instead to go have a cookie. I can't demonstrate, there's no way to demonstrate that, so I don't know. But I had a gut feeling, a certainty in fact, I held it on faith that free will was an illusion. Yet I never knew what it was like to actually believe that. I didn't expect that. I just got suspect suspicion. About two weeks ago, something in me snapped, because I talk about it, I think about it every day, doing this exercise. Something in me changed. And I found myself suddenly believing that. And I was astonished at the impact that it had. It was like a, it was a very liberating feeling to realize that my life is little different than a small stream coursing down a canyon to the right or the left, you know, influenced by the, the force of gravity and the incline of the earth and the various forces all around and the wind and the rocks that it runs into and everything that's happening to me, all the perturbations and eddies and movements and backflows and rapids and the cool deep waters that I may pass through. They're all part and parcel of the universe at large. And that my say-so has little to nothing to do with any of that. It's an artifact of all of that. And I suddenly began believing that. And it didn't have the effect of apathy. It had the effect of peace. It's like, suddenly it's like, wow, well, if I am just a consequence of the universe, so is everybody else. And it's silly for me to be upset at anybody for anything that they've done to me that couldn't have done otherwise. Or that they've done to the earth <laughs> or anybody. It's, things are simply unfolding. And it didn't rob me of my will to, so to speak, to, to, to strive because I know that I, that path, that route, if available to me, then I can take that route. It's like a little tongue of, a tongue of water seeking its way down and finding, oh, here's a good avenue to go, and that happens to be an avenue in the direction of virtue. I'm not choosing that. I simply have, that route has become available to me, and off I go. It's complicated, and I was last night laying in bed uh, thinking about, as I was going to sleep, thinking about how, why did we manifest this sense of free will? Is it, and I s expect it's, a, it's an artifact, um, an emergent quality of things. I mean, there's lots of creatures that get by just fine without this. You know, I don't know that amoeba have any sense of will, but they seem to get by. Plants certainly don't seem to, but maybe we could be wrong. But I, maybe it's like um, artificial intelligence. When you pack enough data in there, eventually things seem to emerge. Consequence, I mean, consciousness may be simply one of them. Well, anyway, that's been going on for a couple of weeks. I can call it out. I can summon this sense up at will now. 
I literally can. I can say, I can say, I can think about it. Because most of the time, my mom not operating that way. I'm on autopilot, this, which is a funny way to say it. But I'm on this autopilot thing going along. But every now and then, um, I will simply turn my mind to it and say, okay, you know, remember that free will isn't real. And suddenly I had to remember it. And the there's a great sense of peace that just falls over the little, everything. It's amazing. It's astonishing. It's it's like it's like I, it's like you know the way that you sometimes would hear about the the you know the those that are st- meditate for a long time and they achieve achieve some sort of an enlightenment where they're suddenly they're awake. That's what it feels like. And I was doing that yesterday at the um, supermarket with my wife. We were at the Tokyo Central and she was shopping. I have no I have no business at the supermarket, the Japanese supermarket, other than to go. I'm like a kid. I, uh, she's, I, she allows me to just go off through the store and pick up anything that I want. <laughs> oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. And I go back to the cart and I just drop things. <laughs> there were a couple of times that uh, if, if I'm not feeling... There was one time, sometime back, I wasn't feeling good and I stayed in the car. And she dropped them in for me on my behalf. She knows what I like. And there's only two things I ever want, which is a little manju, uh, Japanese uh, pounded uh, cake thingies, um, and then a, a little tray of little tiny Meiji chocolates, milk chocolates that I like. Anyway, I did that. I wandered, I put it around the store and I dropped those things in the basket and then I was free to wander and I just let it go. It was super crowded. I just let, I brought, I summoned that memory of that, that free will is an illusion. And suddenly I was, dis, I was disconnected from the sense of that agency. And I was flowing downhill through the store through this crowded store, and I was applying that sense to everybody around me. Look, we are all, uh, all just, you know, the term Brownian motion, you know, the random, you know, movement of molecules, although it certainly wasn't that way, although it is in a, it is in a, in a way, but it isn't. Um, and I was really enjoying it. And then, here's the thing, and maybe today I'll, I'll switch it, because I'm, I'm clearly, I'm talking about the pirate ride today. And then I listened to an interview uh, with, between that guy Lex, I can't remember his last name, he's, he's a nice, good interview, a young man who does interviews with uh, top tier interesting people, um, usually about science, technology, things like that. And he was interviewing Sam Harris, particularly about free will. Sam doesn't believe in free will either. And Sam was describing to Lex what it's like to, to have been convinced over, to swayed over, to not believe in free will. And he was describing exactly the same phenomenon that I'm experiencing. Describing how it's a very peaceful feeling, liberating. Um, and re- how it's a state where being angry at anybody doesn't make any sense. And then he went on to describe how it, he mostly forgets about it but can summon it. And he did it in the interview. He said, like, I'll do it right now. And here it is. And I was watching that. I was like, I was, I think I was having a cup of tea and I was like, uh, the tea, what? Yeah, I was just doing that in the, in, the, in the grocery store. That was an astonishing thing. So now it's, it's mine. I can do it at, at will. And it seems, and it's really an amazing thing. And I do it, I'm increasingly doing it more and more. Um, doing it, training myself in fact I would love to train myself to the point that it just becomes part of who I am and again it doesn't leave me really believing that free will is an illusion doesn't rob life of its interest or splendor or consequence it just it just makes taking any of it too seriously a ridiculous thing to do and then we wind up more like a, a rider on a roller coaster you know, with the, we got to say, wow, this is fun. Wow. Without having to worry about, you know, the gears lubricated. I mean, we still have to tend to life. It's so hard to explain. It's, uh, it's like enjoying the ride while still at, attending to the ride. <laughs> On a roller coaster with a can of oil. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> Lubing the wheels. <laughs> anyway, talked long enough about that. So I'm going to switch that. I was going to talk about the uh, recognition of true limits and true opportunity, but instead 
scratch that. We'll talk about the pirate life. <laughs>